Let us look at another example of seasonal influence in forecasting. The Merit Post Office experiences a seasonal pattern of daily mail volume every week. They have collected the following data for two weeks in thousands of pieces of mail. So in the Merit Post Office, the postmaster has basically collected this information for the amount of mail that they receive during different days of a week. And they have collected this data for two weeks, week one and week two. The data collected indicates that on the Sunday of week one, the post office received 5,000 pieces of mail. And on Sunday of week two, they received 8,000 pieces of mail. On Monday of week one, they received 20,000 pieces of mail, while on Monday of week two, they received 15,000 pieces of mail, and so on. Now this data is having a seasonal pattern on a different day basis. So for example, if you look at the data, Sundays are the days when the mail volume is the lowest, while Fridays are the days when the mail volume is the highest. So this pattern is expected to be repeatable for the subsequent weeks as well. Now the postmaster estimates that there will be 230,000 pieces of mail to sort the next week. So in that case we have to forecast the volume for each day of the week. So the total for let's say week 3 is 230,000 and we have to find out what is the forecast for each of these days. So let's see how we can arrive at the forecast for each of these days using the multiplicative seasonal method of forecasting. So here step number one is to calculate the average demand per season. So calculate average demand per season. Now what is a season in this context? So season is a time duration for which the seasonal influence lasts. So in our example, each day has a different seasonal influence on the number of mail received by the post office. So each day is a season. So now the total demand for week 1 is 224 and there are total of 7 seasons. So the average demand per season for week 1 will be 224 divided by 7. So for week 1 it is 224 divided by 7 which is equal to 7 ones are 7. 7 2s are 14, 7 3s are 21, so 3 and 1 carry over, and 7 2s are 14, so 32, and for week 2, 210 divided by 7, so 210 divided by 7, 7 3s are 21, and then 0. Now let's move to step number 2. So step number two is to divide the actual demand for a season by the average demand per season. 
so basically what this is saying is that for each week divide the actual demand let's say this is 5 for Sunday so divide this by the average demand per season that we had obtained in step number 1 so in step number 1 for week 1 our average demand was 32 so 5 divided by 32 is what we have to find so this number that we'll get 5 divided by 32 is also known as the seasonal index so let's understand this because this is a very important concept so basically here what we are saying is that on an average each day of this week has a demand of 32 pieces of mail due to the seasonal factors there is a difference in the actual demand for different days of the week. So here we are trying to find that if the average is 32, then the actual is 5. So if the average is 1, what is the actual? And that, because it is from a perspective of 1 as the average, is known as a seasonal index. So the index word comes because we are generalizing it in terms of 1. So if for 32 the actual demand is 5 then for 1 how much and then we cross multiply and then we will get let us say this is x. So x multiplied by 32 is equal to 5 or x is equal to 5 divided by 32. So this is nothing but the same thing that we said divide the actual demand which was 5 for a season by the average demand per season which is 32. Similarly for Monday for week 1 we will have 20 divided by 32 that will give the seasonal index for Monday of week 1 and for Sunday of week 2 it will be 8 divided by 30 because 30 is the average demand for week 2. Similarly for Monday of week 2 it will be 15 divided by 30 and so on. So let us calculate the seasonal index. So here I have calculated the seasonal index for each of the days for both week 1 and week 2. Now let's move to step number 3. Step number 3 is to calculate the average seasonal index for each season. So calculate the average seasonal index for each season. So basically we want to arrive at one number for each day as the seasonality index for that particular day. Of course we have already seen that there is a similar pattern in the numbers for both the weeks like it is less on Sundays and high on Fridays and so on. So now we will take the average of the seasonality index for the two weeks for each of the days and that will be the average seasonal index for these days. So what I'm going to do is take these two numbers, let's say 0 0.15625 plus 0 0.26667 and divide it by 2 because there are these two numbers. Similarly for Monday, 0 0.62500 plus 0 0.5 divided by 2. For Tuesday, 0 0.93750 plus 1.06667 divided by 2 and so on. So these numbers here in black are the average seasonal index numbers for each of the day of the week. So what this number means, 0.21146, is that if the average demand for each day or each season is 1, then the demand for Sunday is going to be 0 
Similarly, for Tuesday, if the average demand for each day is 1, then for Tuesday, it is going to be 1.00209 and so on. Now, this concept, let's move to step number 4. So, step number 4 says that calculate each season's forecast for the next time period which in this case is weeks. So calculate each season's forecast for next week in this case. Now we have already been given that the total number of pieces of mail expected for the next week is 230,000 and since we are taking all these numbers as thousands so this means 230 so the total is 230 now there are seven seasons or seven days in the week so let's find out the average which is 230 divided by 7 so this is equal to 32.857 so this is the average demand for each of the days of week number 3 without seasonality and now we have already found out the seasonal index which says that if the average demand is 1 then the seasonal demand for let's say Sunday is 0.21146. So then the question becomes that if the average is 1, then for Sunday, the seasonal demand is 0 0.2146, 0 0.21146. So if the average demand is 32.857, then how much is the seasonal demand for Sunday? Let's say this is x. So x multiplied by 1 is equal to 0 0.21146 multiplied by 32.857. And this is equal to, so here this is x, x multiplied by 1 is x, is equal to 6.948. So, of course, this is in thousands, so basically it is 6,948 mail for Sunday. Similarly, for Monday, we can find the forecast by simply multiplying 32.857 with the seasonal index, which is 0 0.56250. And for Tuesday again, 1.00209 multiplied by 32.857. For Wednesday, 1.04688 multiplied by 32.857 and so on. And then don't forget that these numbers are in thousands. So we have to find out the actual numbers in thousands. So let me find out the forecast for week number 3. So once we multiply the average demand for the next week with the seasonality index we find these numbers and of course I've converted these in thousands now if we just validate basically you know for week number one we had the Sunday's demand around five six seven eight you know so in the uh, single digit so again same thing for week number three for Sunday it is 6.9 which is let's say seven so between five and eight and then we had noticed that the demand for Friday was the highest. And again, for week number three, we can see that the demand for Friday is the highest, which is 74,271. So this is showing that the seasonality has carried over to week number three. 